Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. back close to stuck the landing on that i yeah. almost got it juggling between the uh yep. the elevator music and the, <clears throat> the little intro there so anyway yes we are back live on the bourbon out once again i already got some folks in the chat well the gregors is there hello greg i had to check to make sure that <laughs> we were here in the elevator music do the little test there sir cuts is in the house og brick is in the house sugar kitty sugar is in the house kitty. Uh, Bobby threw a comment in there earlier. He's at work, so he may be joining us. You know, I actually on. saw Sugar Kitty on a live stream. It was about a week ago on someone's, maybe Sean's. Like, did he appear? Yeah. On? Oh, really? You so saw I, the real yes. Sugar Kitty? So I know what Sugar Kitty looks like. I don't know what Sir Cuts looks like. Steven the Jaws. Is it? Is Cheers. it like Jaws like the shark? We're going to need a bigger bourbon. <laughs> 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 Perfect reference. So here's how we're going to do this tonight. And this is so for the people watching on the rebroadcast that are not taking part in the live stream, we're going to do kind of an open discussion about stuff like this and stuff like this, allocated bourbons versus readily available stuff. We're going to talk about the secondary market and liquor store price gouging. And we're going to have a couple of guests on, hopefully. Have you already given out. them the link or are you going to do that? In a, I have. In a they should have. Let's bring up. Yeah. So I did send the link out. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sean from whiskey wars, may be joining us. I believe Steven from tipsy whiskey shenanigans, nice, uh, nice. Bobby said he's going to try to join later on. And then Myron from bourbon drop, which is a new channel I've been watching and it's great. So go check Joe's. out bourbon. Oh, it's like Joe's. Okay. So go check out bourbon drop before we get too far well, into this here. I'm going to throw out some wrenches. Oh, okay. So people can, uh, well, how do I do this? Now? He's already got one. You can't give him a wrench if he's got a wrench. Oh, okay, cool. But there are other people that need wrenches. So, so Steven, they already have wrenches. Oh, they must have them from, yeah, from, the, from the last yeah, stream. Exactly. So once you get the wrench once. Exactly. Put, so why, why isn't this working for, uh, I was trying to give Steven a wrench. I don't know. I am not, no, you're signed in as the bourbon note. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, huh. uh, what are you guys seeing on the screen right now? Because this is... Uh, Oh, I must have. Uh, yeah, you're back in time. Yeah, I'm back in time. Okay, I'm not screwing around with that anymore. Whoever's got um, uh, wrenches, throw some links in if need be. Greg Aarons. Hey, Ben and Greg. We met a couple weeks ago at a small town liquor store owned by Alyssa. Cheers. Yes, I do remember you, Greg. Greg had scored a bottle of William LaRue Weller at a lottery wow, up in Fargo. Congratulations. Hey, man, thanks for uh, for hopping in our chat. That's awesome. All right. So anyway, getting back, Dr. Robert oh, is in one, the house. One quick thing. Steven, if you're still listening, um, I, we saw your message. Thank you so much for the offer. Um, I will send you Ben and my phone number. And how we like to do this is... What when, was the offer? It, it, he go, he's going to go to liquor stores occasionally. Oh, yeah, that's Just right. If feel we free to California. send us a text and say, hey, I'm at a liquor store. Here's a picture of the shelves. Is there anything you're interested in us picking? Or can I pick anything up for you? And right there, right then and there, we'll send you money in Venmo. Um, and then you pick it up. Sure. Yeah. So, yes. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so much OG Brick is, or uh, Sugar Kitty asked if I was signed in YouTube. Yes, I was. And then for some reason it wasn't working. And then I screwed it up. And so, whoever's got wrenches, throw throw the links in. Sugar Kitty scored, uh, or OG Brick scored a WLW in a state lotto once. That's awesome. Um, so anyway, for the people watching the the rebroadcast, we're going to talk about this stuff for a little while, and then if our potential guests hop into the backstage area, which to be perfectly honest, we've never done that before. So I don't even know how that works. Well, I think it's just like the video. So we can probably get rid of both of those. Yeah, that's what neither, I'm going to do. Neither of those will be brought back to the world. So let's talk about it. Aiden. Aiden's in the house. What's up, Aiden? All right. So here's here's the, the oh, yeah, subject. What, what at do hand. you set the table? We've got, well, it looks like the table is already pretty well set here. We've got two piles of bourbon. And we've been meaning to do a video on this for a long time. We actually filmed a video. We did. Up, for, I forget why we didn't release it. it may we were no, trying the new, oh. trying to do like a new set. We were sitting over in the booth, and um, 
and so we just, you know, we, we filmed it and it just didn't look that great. And, mm -hmm. and we kind of rambled a little bit as we tend to do case in point. Um, so we never released it. And then I was watching, I had commented on bourbon drops video about, he did a, a, a video about, um, whether or not we're part of the problem, we as bourbon consumers for, you know, that causes liquor stores to be able to jack the prices up and people that are buying it and stuff like that. Well, and I commented on his video and it reminded me of that video that we did that we never released. I was like, well, hey, let's do that. And I threw an invite out to him. So hopefully he saw that today. Um, if if you didn't, Myron, and you're watching, throw uh, something in the chat here and I'll get you a link. Anyway, allocated bourbons. We want to hear your opinion on this stuff because the one thing that we wanted to include in that video, and I know none of you guys in the chat here are, are beginners to bourbon, but some people that watch this rebroadcast might be. Mm -hmm. And it's the idea of like, do you need to chase these bourbons? Are they worth chasing? So I, I kind of want to establish a baseline, mm -hmm. but I'm reluctant to do it because I don't want to throw you under the bus if, oh. if you are... Th throw me under the bus. If I'm, you're bus worthy. Yeah, I'm, I'm bus worthy. Um, yeah, a little bit too much. It's a great bottle though, Dave. Um, I've never paid more than retail for a bottle of bourbon. Now I paid like a little too much for retail, but I've never bought anything off Facebook or anything like that. So where's the part where I go under the bus here? Cause I've well, never done that either. Okay. okay. Well, I did. I, maybe you have, <laughs> I don't know. No. So, uh, uh, okay. Sean says he's running low. That's fine, Sean. We're going to do talk here for a little bit and then we're going to bring some folks in. Um, if for some reason you're in the backstage and we don't realize you're there, just throw a message in the comments. Cause we're, we're, comically bad at this well we just, we've never done it before and so um yeah i've never paid i paid like you said a little too much for retail yeah or maybe like an extra 20 30 bucks i got the rip van winkle here for 100 bucks yeah yeah technically it should be like 70 bucks but nobody sells it for that anymore it and it 100 yeah. bucks is legitimately like a fair price and fair enough yeah i was willing to pay that but i've never paid secondary prices and the thing is, is like, these are some great bottles. George T. Stagg is great. All of these are great. But there's so many other ones so out there. OG just had a really good point. And so if you want to throw that up, a, I think it's a beef or a... Right like, here? Yeah, that one. Okay. So I think this is a fair point, but it can go too far. <laughs> just out of spite. Yeah. You so know, I totally get it. Like, if you literally have people lining up to buy your product then yeah, you're going to raise the price a little bit. That's only, that's supply and demand. But your price, I don't believe, is going up that much. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And and when you walk into a liquor store, as one of us bourbon nerds who know approximately what the price should be, and what's this one? You know, and 50 if, bucks. If you saw this at $250, you could just turn around and walk out. But you're going to develop an opinion of the owner of that store. You know, and I absolutely develop opinions of yeah, owners and of I stores will buy anything. immediately. Yeah. I judge even I'm if a... even if they had um, the foolproof at um, you know thirty nine bucks. That's a good price. I'm still not going to buy it from them because I know he's price gouging on this. Yeah, exactly that, that kind of thing. And so you know, you look at things like seventeen ninety two foolproof. You got the old elk, uh, the weeder there, Knob Creek one hundred, Wild Turkey one hundred one, Old Forester one hundred. Grab stuff here. All these things that you know. Some of these are budget friendly, old forester, wild turkey. Yeah. You know, Knob Creek is bordering on the budget, but it's a nine year, 100 proof bourbon. It's great. Mm -hmm. You know, and you look at things like Eagle Rare. This is a great bourbon. It is, but it's allocated now, unfortunately. It's hard to get. Now, usually when I do see these on the shelf, they're not ridiculous. That one seems to be, for it's the most part, in the $50 range. I have seen it more. Yeah. Well, I usually 40, yeah. Yeah, 40 to 50. Yep. And to be perfectly honest, it's a 10 year bourbon. From a really big popular distillery, it, yeah, it, it, that's kind of a fair price, I think. And that's the other thing is sometimes these bottles, these allocated ones, get they get so overhyped, some of them, mm -hmm. and then other ones when the price just goes up incrementally, people freak out about it. Mm -hmm. Like Eagle Rare used to be like a twenty five dollar, thirty dollar bottle. I paid twenty eight dollars for one at yeah. Sam's Club not that long ago. Yep. At the end of the day, this is a 10-year bourbon, a high-quality bourbon. It's 90 proof, but it's 10 years. I'm not mad at $40 for this. Right. You know? Um, but I have gone into stores and seen this for $200, which is out That's of control. More than, more than I've seen. But I have to tell you, I've had, I think, all of these, probably. And they're all good. No doubt about it. They are good bourbons over there. And there's a lot of others that are in the unicorn range. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking a, what, $28, $30 bourbon? Yeah. 
this is exceptional. It's better than Blanton's for sure. But yeah, Blanton's is, you know, bottle over quality. Yeah, absolutely. All hat, no cattle. We happen to love the Antique 107. Yeah. And I'm I'm sad that it's allocated because it is a fantastic bourbon. Same with the George T. Sag. I would yeah. absolutely buy this very often if it were a $80 bottle. But are available. any of these worth the secondary prices they're they not. charge? Not even close. I have yet to hear one bourbon reviewer, whiskey tuber say, yes, this is worth Supposedly secondary Supposedly William prices. LaRue Weller is like the best ever. I've never had it. so I, I haven't either, and I want to. And I heard this year's in particular. Well, it was OG Brick 420 that said he has a bottle of it. He said he got one in a state lottery Yeah, once. and he said he wanted to share. Oh, yeah, there you go. I'm kidding. They're talking uh, amongst themselves a little bit here. So put in the comments here, and I know we're going to try to, to get to all of these because people would probably comment a lot on these. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my local stores has a large sign outside the door. We have none of the following in stock. No need to ask. Happy Van Winkle. <laughs> yeah, it's and that's probably the best way of doing it because here's the other thing. It's not hardcore bourbon enthusiasts that are going in and asking for Pappy. It's, or newer, yeah, it's, it's newer people, it's that, newer and they people. don't really know. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't have known. You know, and I remember I, at one point when I first got into it, I saw that um, like the Weller 12 and whatever the other one, Bobby, you just made one of these. It was the poor man's Pappy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, cool. I'll just get some Weller 12 and try that. I didn't know it was allocated. So I <laughs> sure. went into Total Wine and asked for Weller 12 like a moron. Yeah. You know, you know, funny story. I walked into Ace Liquors, and if you're from the Minneapolis area, you know that that's a, a decent upper end liquor store. Entertain the internet. I'm going to turn these lights on just to brighten up it background a little bit here and literally a couple walked in in front of me and said do you have any blantons and and i kind of laughed and and the store owner you know person working there kind of laughed a bit and they said no you're never gonna see blantons and and explain the whole thing like it's allocated and everybody hunts for it and so on and they ended up buying you know some basic bourbon but yeah that's they know pappy and they know blantons and a couple others but so. well and then the other thing is is when you get, sorry about this, I just want to brighten up this background a little bit here. It kind of helps with the contrast between us and the darkness in the background. Um, liquor store I frequent, where I got a relationship with the owner, we'll get the opportunity to buy bottles. You know, you don't have to tell us about your relationships. I mean, that's, <laughs> your personal life is your own business. This is the internet. Um, the other thing is like, I remember when I was a little bit newer, or was it, so to preface, this How Stag new? Junior, like forty-four years ago, new kind no, of not, tricycle, not, new, not that new. <laughs> um, like the Stag Junior, the Antique One Hundred Seven Blantons, those are all ones that I've gotten just by walking into a store. Totally, and the store owner happened to be cool. We ended up sitting there talking about bourbon for a while, and then just said, "Hey, uh, do you have any Stag Junior?" I didn't ask it. The store owner asked me. He said, "Hey, did you get any Stag Junior this year?" And I said, "No, I've been looking for it." And it was just a cool guy that hooked me up with a bottle of it. It happened to me too. Um, but I, sometimes you'll go into stores and you'll even just mention a breath of anything allocated and they laugh at you and they're, I don't have any of that. It's yours. I and they'll just laugh at you, you know, I didn't know that. Wow. So that's also not the way to go about it. Cause then you're just kind of being an ass to people, you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah, people laughing or some people just don't know. And you know, OG brick says, yes, I have an unopened bottle. I'm guessing he's talking about the, uh, the WLW. Yeah. Oh, he says, one of these days at a meetup. Okay, we're scheduling a meetup at OG Brick 420's house. <laughs> so Greg, is he, like, he knows Alyssa. He was in Fargo. Is he in our area? Is he a little bit more to our west? I think he's in the Fargo area. Is that correct, Greg? Or were you just up there? For... You don't have to tell us where you live, but I'm just curious. I asked Alyssa if she had a way to reach you, and she didn't, but I picked up two Thomas Handys at MSRP. Would you guys like my other bottle? At MSRP, yeah, we probably would. Yeah, totally. Sweet. Um, yeah, we've got anybody wants to get a hold of us, you can get a hold of us just at the bourbon note at gmail.com, or I don't know if you can message through the actual Facebook. You probably could. It's but a page, that, that's so yeah, an easy one. The bourbon note at gmail.com. And is then the just best tell way. us, you know, that you know, we chat on YouTube because we do get the occasional message and you know, your username is different in your email versus what's on YouTube and yada yada. Yeah. So Aiden says, honestly, at work, um, it's very rarely that legit whiskey nerds who just go in and ask. The legit guys just ask if there's anything we find interesting. Yeah, for sure. That's, I would... a, that's exactly what I say. Yeah. Do you have anything interesting? Yeah. And I know they know, and they'll say no with 
they say no. And if they say, you know, you're kind of in the middle here, you got to go that way a little bit and just looking at our screen. <laughs> Come over here this way. If you, if you go around and you move the camera that way, do you think that would work? <laughs> would that be the easier on you? <laughs> I'm just trying to keep our sign centered, you know, it's yeah. such a lovely sign. It's not arts and crafts signs. day. Everywhere signs. Um, if you ain't hunting, you ain't scoring. And you know what? That's true too. It, but the thing is, like when I go out hunting, I'm not looking for anything in this pile of bourbon. I'm not actively looking for any of these. In, to be honest, I mean, I don't go out as much as you do, but I always am looking for like the old Forester single barrels. Yeah, which, something when, they're that's, getting kind of crazy expensive. And they're store rare, picks. but they're doable. Cool store picks. Yeah, stuff like that. I mean, I'm not looking for George T. Stag on a day yeah. of bourbon hunting. Yeah. And if you're going out bourbon hunting, you're not finding these. Don't get frustrated. Nobody's finding them. Exactly. I honestly, I mean, I think they come out like in the fall, like maybe yep, Thanksgiving area. Yep. There's a flood of them. There's one or two people, you know, percent wise that they will just walk into a store and get lucky. And then they post a crotch shot sitting in their parking lot. Yep, absolutely. With the That's, bottle crotch shot. Exactly. Aiden says, now we can tell when you're trying to be on my good side. And trust me, I'll go out of my way if you do that. Yeah, for sure. FYI, if Aiden can... works in a liquor store. We won't talk about throwing them under the bus, but... He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he knows he what is he's an talking expert. about. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the thing is, seriously, too, Greg, we need to talk. What? I, I want to move to Fergus Falls. I like that town oh. a lot. I thought you were going to move to Florida. Anywhere but here. Well, I don't think <laughs> Fergus Falls is going to be better weather-wise than here. Um, uh, OG Brick says, I had to make a comment. I had to make that comment on Bourbon Real Talks channel this week. I made the comment, don't chase bourbon, you'll never catch it. I mean... It depends on what you're chasing. Like this stuff, you're going to get into lotteries. So maybe we should talk about... So there's secondary pricing when it's amongst like well, people on Facebook so let's, or whatever. Let's, before we go there, what are you looking for for bourbon? If you're looking to own George C. Stagg, the only way to own George C. Stagg is to find it and buy it. Yeah. If you're looking to buy the best bourbon ever, there's so many great options. Yeah. If you're looking... I mean, I, I think it depends a little bit on what you're looking for. In our case, I mean, we do a channel, so we have to have a fairly good selection. Yeah. And there's always new stuff that comes out. So we manage, you know, the budget to try to, you know, find cool stuff, interesting stuff that we can make videos on. Um, yeah. And, and sure. occasionally we get lucky and we get picked on lotteries and that kind of stuff. And so we'll get one of these a year kind of thing. And it's fine. Yeah. And so Mr. Great Shot is in the house. Welcome. They never get anything from the secondary market. Agreed. Are you Schlammered is in the house. Are Sir Cut says maybe Ben is a little on the edge. Okay, but then we have to just like crowd the middle. I try to keep both of us in within the color of the, you know, that's how I judge where we're at. <laughs> so anyway, let, the other thing is, so secondary market, people selling it on Facebook, flipping bottles. I, I will never participate in that totally under agree. any circumstances. Just not doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if somebody's walking out of a, a liquor store that they happen to score a Pappy 15 and somebody walks up and says, I'll give you $1,500 for that bottle right now. Am I mad that they're going to sell it to them for 1500 bucks? No, that's a person to person, person thing. to person trade. And you do what you want with your money and your bottles. And I, it's not what I would do, but I'm not mad at you for that. It's, is, it's is the that, prop propping up bourbon prostitution. It probably is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, but when you, when there's a market for it on places like Facebook or on the internet or wh wherever you, you find secondary bottles, I don't even know. Yep. Um, then you're, you're contributing to this general secondary market thing. Like, I think if I'm, like I said, you walk out of a liquor store and somebody offers to buy a bottle off you because you got it in the lottery. Yeah. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you need the money more than you need the bottle. I'm not mad about that, yeah. but you're not, con you're not participating in this overall, you know, thing that drives the prices up and drives the demand up i am mostly offended when a liquor store quadruples the price or more that's what i want to get to the most is yeah. the the thing that just is is liquor stores doing it and right. the reason for that is and i here's the thing obviously we we promote totally spirits great. liquor yeah um bourbon real talk is an excellent show. yes it is very yeah, great channel. absolutely um Hold on. Steven jo Joe says, uh, when I hunt, I'm never looking for BTAC or Pappy. So many great bottles hiding in plain sight. Absolutely. For oh, sure. Cool. Yep. But I wouldn't want to bother with allocated bottles when I have this delicious 10, 10, four roses pick. Nice. That's awesome. I'm going to have that exact bottle next weekend. Oh yeah. Hey, the Wright County Whiskey Club. Um, Tim sent me a message today. Said there was like four or five spots left in that. 
So if you're in Minnesota, especially on the West Metro side, um, it's in St. Michael. Next can, Friday, the 17th, yep. there will be a, a Four Roses flight, like five or six, including a limited edition. It's, it's the 2022 limited. So the, the lineup is it's the 86 proof Japanese only version. Yes. The regular one, the small batch select, um, two store picks, cast strength store picks, and then the 2022 limited edition. 31, and I think it's like $31. Okay, $31. And so I think as of today, there are like four or five spots left. So if any of you guys want to do that, go to Facebook and go to the Wright County Whiskey Club. Um, let's see. Are you using the word rabbit hole because you like rabbit hole? Because it's actually <laughs> a pretty good distillery. They do some kind of cool malted grains. Yeah. Oh, OG Brick says, the reason I went down this rabbit hole is a, a comment about Eagle Rare being hidden amongst the wine bottles, just like you guys are saying, it's always worth looking for an alternative. For sure. And so I was just about to say something about Spirits Liquor. Obviously, Greg and I talk about that store a lot. It's a fantastic a, store. It's a um, cool place just to visit. Yeah, Great absolutely. Selection. And so what Alyssa will do is she'll get like a case of Eagle Rare, and that's exactly what she does. She'll just kind of have fun with it a little bit, hide it out on the shelf. Make it kind of fun, you know, hide it in with the, uh, you know, the old foresters or something or, you know, and so that's cool. I mean, I think that's a fun thing to do. And then charges retail for it. Dad, we don't want to talk about this. Yeah, don't tell anybody. That's right. <laughs> um, Aiden, no, he's totally wrong about this. Was well, it's his opinion. Nope, you have no right to your own opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Least favorite is Weller 12. All right, some people don't like. I mean, some people think it's over oak. I or thought it was going to be over oak, and I was really impressed with the bottle I had. Um, is there anybody in our like backstage? I don't know how to check that. If they just I show would up, I think down they here. would be right there. Okay, because I don't know how that works. So if you are backstage and you want to hop on, let us know. But yeah, so the thing that gets me is when liquor stores do it, because liquor stores, I think more than anybody, really prop up that secondary market when they do that. Because because so. then they're validating that price. Yeah. You know, if you could go into liquor stores and maybe you're the lucky one who finds this on the shelf for a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Great. But when you're putting it out there for $2,000, you're telling your customers, you're telling people that go in there that maybe don't know any better, that this is how much this bourbon costs. I you think know? that's dishonest it is. for a store to do that. And then, you know, there's other things too, like, um, you know, it's the lottery system. I like fair lotteries. Again, spirits liquor. I, I can't commend this store enough because they have integrity. I've had, you know, I've had great luck at Cashwise and, you know, Coburn's. They've had integrity in selling bottles at retail that just come in, they'll throw them on the shelf behind the counter. Yep. Um, but, you know, up at Spirits, she gets some really, really great bottles. And all you have to do is go in and put your name in the thing. And then it's a list of all the bottles. And you put, here's my first choice, second choice, whatever. And you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to spend the most money there. It's not just for the people with the most money, you know, and it's a fair way of doing it. Yeah. So Stephen makes a, a comment here that I think is a good call out because distribution is weird. Like we just cannot buy certain bottles because they're not available in Minnesota. We are yeah. sure about that. Well, um, everybody knows that like Weller is available more in like Ohio and Texas. They're yeah, well totally. known for that. Yep. Texas, I get because the bourbon they produce is so awful. Like yeah, they have I mean, to have a leg up I, on something. I, I think we need to send as much as we can to them because they honestly don't know what they're doing <laughs> with the still. <laughs> so, I'm sure so, I've made yeah. somebody who uh, who you're with long shot. Yeah, from Texas. So Dr. Robert says one larger store that frequently gets allocated bottles, they sell at MSRP, but you have to buy one of their store picks in order to get allocated. So I'm usually I've, okay with that. I've okay. Seen, I kind of agree. Like I've seen a bundle where you have to buy this and this for 120 bucks. In Minnesota, I, I don't think that that's actually legal. I, I've heard. I think you're right. Stores do it. What I don't like is they say, okay, you can get a bottle of Blanton's and then our Knob Creek store pick and it's three hundred dollars. No, I you're paying two hundred and fifty for the Knob Creek store pick and the Blantons is at MSRP. No, I saw it was a fair. It was like one hundred twenty bucks for two bottles and a little thing of cherries or whatever, uh, and they called it like an old fashioned mix, but it was an allocated. It was like a maybe it was Eagle Rare or something like that. It was okay, but nothing outrageous. Yeah, like I think I'm okay a little bit of bundling, but again, there's some. Minnesota has seems to have some really weird um, liquor laws. So yeah, we do. And ninety nine percent of them don't work in our favor. Yeah, fourteen hundred is like eighty ish bottles of wild turkey one hundred and one. Yeah, exactly. 
Did I bring the wild turkey one? Well, this is it's the, right there. Yeah, this is yours. Yeah, feel free. Did I bring the? I I did not. So I have a wild turkey one on one uh, rare uh, rye. Oh yeah, like yeah, just like instead of spending like three hundred bucks on one of these unicorns, go try a whole bunch of different distilleries. You know, ninety proof or yeah. whatever, and like I think that's way uh, more interesting. OG Brick says, uh, no Weller in Virginia, but we get Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, and Blanton's. OG, I thought you were in Minnesota. Or no, that's Sir Cuts is in Minnesota. Yeah. I thought OG was for some reason too. No, was he the one? Did, are you in uh, like Richmond? Someone just made a reference to Richmond, Virginia on Instagram. That may have been him. Could have been someone else though. I'm 100% certain it was you or somebody else. The overwhelming smell I get on Weller 12 is dog urine. <laughs> It took me back to when pure old Bassett Hound hit kidney failure. <laughs> that's a terrible uh, association. I mean, that's I feel bad for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I do feel bad for you on both accounts. Number one, you have poor sense of smell and poor uh, luck with animals. And you're a veterinary assistant. Yeah. Uh, Sir Cut says it's the stores that are get, going to dupe someone into buying a gift for a lover. Lover or a loved one? I suppose either one. And that's slimy. Yeah, it is. You're assuming that's not the same thing. Because right. <laughs> really, they're just... Um, Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Um, really, they're just... They're taking advantage of people that that maybe just don't know any better. And I don't say don't know any better as like condescending. I mean, you're new to it. There was a time I didn't know any better. I thought Blanton's was $250 just because I looked it up on the internet. And, you know, it's... Of course, it's not worth anywhere near that. But yeah, just slimy liquor stores. It just... it It bothers me to my core and i've heard the thing so much like well in order to get these bottles we have to sell so much fireball and we have to you know, blah 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 this is i think that's true it may be true but the thing is is every time that i've talked to a store that has integrity that sells these bottles at or at normal msrp prices they don't seem to to complain about that they don't seem to have that same problem it's the people who sell it for way more than it's worth that's a, well, I have to, you know, because so, it's like, so Stephen makes a really interesting point. And I think this is illegal in Minnesota, but I've seen it. Oh, yeah. If I see another bottle of Wheatley Vodka and Fireball bundled with a an E.H. Taylor, <laughs> I'm going to scream. Yeah. So I've seen it a few times where you have to buy this in order to get that. Now, at least those are at least Buffalo Trace products. Um, mm hmm and yeah, so and they're, they're ramping up their production. So who knows what'll happen to them? Eventually, you know, this will be on the shelf everywhere every day. Yeah, I mean, these the unicorns probably less so. I don't if if, if Eagle Rare was on the shelf every day. Buffalo, well, if, if any of these were on the shelf every day, except maybe for Blanton's, I don't think they're overrated as far as like they're overrated in price, but they are excellent bourbons. They really they are, are great. I, if these were the on the shelf yeah. all the time. They would sell all the time. I don't think people would just say, okay, I'm sick of Eagle Rare. They're going to buy it just as often as they're buying a Knob Creek 9-year mm -hmm. or anything else that's available on the yeah. shelf. All right, folks, we have our first guest. Let's see if we can uh, get this going here. I think he can hear us, but Add we can't to the hear stream. him. You know, honestly, this is the great. What's up, fellas? What's going on, Dude. Sean? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good, guys. All right, break this out all the haters since we're talking about them. Um, nice. What do you what do you got in front of you there? I see some E.H. Taylors and uh, yeah, you know, just kind of all, all the all the basic ones, I guess. You know, so E.H. Taylors, small batch and single barrel, the Weller Special Reserve, uh, one hundred seven, Eagle Rare, and then the you know the king of the Taters, the, the Blantons. There. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so. We were just we we're in the middle of just talking about. Um, we kind of talked about these and hunting and secondary, but we were talking about liquor stores price gouging and how that's just really the one that uh, um, really grinds our gears more than anything. Absolutely. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you run into that a lot where you're at? You're in, are you in Kentucky? I'm in Kentucky. South central Kentucky is where I'm at. Um, okay. Yeah. So I can actually show you guys that there's a map directly behind me. So I am right here. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. Right next to the Daniel Boone National Forest there. Um, yeah, just uh, just over the Tennessee line. Uh, yeah, it's it's a huge problem here in Kentucky because Kentucky is not state control. Wait a minute. You don't like Jack Daniels and you're that close to Jack Daniels? I do not it's like, like Jack Holy Land. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the, I don't like their base stuff. I think the, yeah, I, yeah, I, the bond is decent. Um, really, anything above the bond is is, is all right. But uh, 
Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, back to the the question at hand. Um, you know, so like this is, you know, something like three four hundred dollars around here, the single barrel, which is insane to me. Um, yeah. You know, the, the small batch is usually a hundred plus, hundred hundred plus. Um, you know, these uh, at a at a local liquor store right now, this is one hundred and fifty dollars. Seriously, uh, the, the one seven five, yeah. At least oh. it's a home record, but still, that's out of control. Well, yeah, I mean, because I don't think it's good at fifty. So, um, <laughs> totally agree. It's, uh, it's okay, but this it's, one, it's a yeah, this one hardly ever see it. Uh, if you do, it's three four hundred dollars. Eagle Rare, hundred ish usually. Uh, and it, it, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. Uh, can you see the dustiness? Yeah. Here, uh, this is this one this one is sitting on your shelf for too this long. This one or? is the this one is the most dusty of the dusty ones. You, know, you can kind of see it there. No, I just I don't drink these much. I, I think uh, you know, I think as you guys were kind of talking about earlier, um, I think if these are your favorite bourbons at any point in your journey through bourbon, they won't be for long. Um, yeah, that's so a great, great point. Yeah. Yeah, so I think as, as you explore stuff, you're going to find things that are cheaper and easier to find that you're going to like better. Yeah, yeah, so. yep. totally true. Yeah, and so I wonder if, you know, being in Kentucky, since that's kind of the hub of, of whiskey tourism, they know people are coming to Kentucky to buy bourbon. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. maybe they think then they can get away with, uh, with, with the secondary prices. Because yeah. we've got stores that, I mean, for the most part, you just don't see any of these around here but when you do like I, I have seen eagle rare for 200 dollars, you know and right. i've also purchased it for 28 you know yeah so i mean it's quite the swing and i guess it maybe just depends on on the liquor store owner you know and you know let's see if let's get another opinion on here yeah there we go what's up we've got. we've got steven from tipsy whiskey shenanigans hello hello, oh. hello. sorry i'm a hello. little late Oh, that, that's quite all right. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about your guys itself? Good, good. You know, I think I've been on maybe one live stream with you, but other than that, we've never talked aside from in comments back and forth to each other on, on each other's videos here. So mm -hmm. right. good to have you on. Yeah, I've been MIA. I'm always MIA in like a lot of the whiskey <laughs> tube related stuff. Life is just so ridiculously busy nowadays. It's, I don't know. It's hard to keep track of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're in Arizona, right, Stephen? Yes. So how do you guys, I've heard Arizona is actually a good state for Weller as well. Um, not really. I mean, the lot, so because of the issue with the distributor and tr I don't know too much about it. Cause quite frankly, my thoughts and opinions of Buffalo Trace is it's all overrated and it's not worth the juice ain't worth the squeeze. Um, sure. but because because they're doing the whole transition or they're getting rid of their distributor, they've um, been just yeah. dropping so much stuff of like all Seriously? their products. So like every single, for the last two, three weeks, there's been a lot of people flooding things. I passed on some Eagle rare, some EH Taylor, but I did get a Weller special reserve. But outside of that, like it's kind of, you know, maybe you'll see it once a quarter Huh. Do you think they were just like stockpiling? I mean, I think that's why Buffalo Trace fired. Um, I forget the name of the company. But I mean, no. so they're I just like would... letting it all go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not completely letting like everything go, I would assume, but it definitely seems like they're, let's see. Sorry. I'm trying to pop out chat and talk at the same time. And it's not easy for me to do that. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Steven question related to that. Are you able to see uh, chat in StreamYard? Cause I can't. No, no, no. I'm just popping out chat from YouTube. Okay. I got you. Yeah, um, this is, this is the other side of YouTube that you're not, or the stream that you're not used to. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we yeah. can show chat other than one at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we can see the chat, but in order to have the chat up here, we have to have the main screen minimized. So all of you guys are like this big, you know, <laughs> little squares. Oh, yeah. The, so if we go full screen, it'd be great, but then we can't see the chat. So, um, no, so yeah, Stephen, I, I saw in your uh, bourbon haul video that you just posted. 
that yeah, you got yeah, hold that, of that special reserve that you had never had before. And special reserve is like that's one of those ones that would fall into the category. It'd be like a, just a great budget friendly shelf, mm -hmm. you know, just a a good solid go to menu proofer that you'd have on the shelf every day for twenty two bucks. Yeah, for twenty two yeah. bucks, and it's mm -hmm. fine. It's got a screw top. Yep. Yeah, I have a twelve, and I quite frankly don't really enjoy it too much. I think it's okay, but I, I waited in line for three hours in the cold last winter at like a There's raffle like a thing. <laughs> hey, li listen, it was cool for me. Okay, it was cool for well, me. Well, are you uh, high altitude Arizona, like up near no, Flagstaff Flag or Phoenix? No. Oh yeah, I live in. Okay, Minnesota. we're in Minnesota. You can't say cold. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I was cold. Level zero. <laughs> I, I was cold struggling for like two hours two to three hours or so just to get a i got a what what did i get i think i got a eagle rare store pick yeah. and a weller 12 and i mean oh, i got no, them I for good prices but i just did not care i like i don't yeah. love them in any which way so I, since then i I got the Weller because I've never had it, but I honestly, I it's still like sealed. I might just do it as like a giveaway or someone something for like someone who actually cares more about it than I will, because I'm not going to enjoy it the same way other people will. Indeed. Yeah, it, it's a basic, it's a basic ninety proof twenty twenty two dollar bourbon. Yep. Nothing yep. wrong with it, but it's just that's what it is. Yep, rather have this. That's a Wilderness Trail. Is that the yep. the regular? Is it the bottled and bond rye mash? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm doing Matt Madness training on my channel in 24 minutes. So, you know, I got to. Are you going to be like on Matt Madness? Um, yeah, Friday. Oh, nice. Well, we'll definitely watch that. Yeah. That's awesome. I have no idea how it's going to go. I'm really? fully expecting uh, to show up to the one and not doing it again. I mean, I'm kind of also okay with that because I do have, you know, a wedding coming up in like a month. So, you know, lots of things to be done. A, a wedding for you? Are you getting married? For, yeah, for me. It's a little oh. personal. You don't have to ask, answer Con a question Congratulations. Like that. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Sean, have you ever waited in line for a, like a lottery or a whiskey or a you know bourbon drop? I thought you were asking if you'd ever been married. Like, Wait. <laughs> all of a sudden, we're going there now. <laughs> Five times, actually, working on the six. <laughs> no, uh, no uh, I've, I've never waited in line. Uh, and I don't ever really plan to. I, I just like I, I know there's a lot of people in chat that probably strongly disagree, but Buffalo Trace just like as a company is just not my favorite stuff. Now the B tax stuff is amazing, but that's usually not what you're waiting in line for. Um, yep, yeah, totally and so yeah. I just don't see any reason to do it. Um, yeah, uh, I, I would I would like uh, if I was guaranteed. Like an ECBP, I might wait in line. That just so I don't have to like wait for it to come and ho hope that I get one. That'd be about the only bottle like regularly that I might wait in line. And I'd, I'd still only wait in line maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> I just, sure. I'm, not, I'm not doing it. Yeah. So I do have a, I hope that this whole distribution oh, uh -oh. thing. Wow. Got in my way. That we don't <laughs> normally have bottles. Of yeah, the that's true. In order to keep these in the frame, they're like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Greg's hand is touching <laughs> that bottle as he's standing there. So I, I hope this whole distribution stuff with Buffalo Trace fixes Eagle Rare on Buffalo Trace because I think they're okay. Like they, oh, they for belong, sure. You know, they're the everyday drinkers, but yeah, they they should be allocated. They shouldn't be unicorns. Oh, hey, Bourbon Drop is here in the chat. Did he? Uh, um. So Myron, so Bourbon Drop is a, is a channel that I don't know if you guys have you seen Bourbon Drop before? Maybe. Yeah, so I just found his channel this week. It's a great channel. Um, Myron, if you want to hop on here. I think he sent you an email with the link, right? No, yeah. I'm so Myron, if you want to hop on, send an email to um, thebourbonnote at gmail.com. And yeah. then we'll send you a link and you can hop on with us. We'd love to have you. Uh, so he just did a video on kind of on this subject about whis uh, liquor stores overcharging. And Greg and I, we said at the beginning of the video, we've actually been meaning to do a allocated bourbons versus, you know, non-allocated. The fact that most of these are overrated, great bourbons, but, you know, mm -hmm. there's some great bourbons over here as well. And, uh, and then Myron just did a video about um, 
you know, liquor store prices. And it, it was titled, are we part of the problem? You know, and that's a good people question. that are going out and spending ridiculous money on these bottles. We don't do that. And I'm guessing you guys probably don't, but well, you, people no, don't do. Assume. And yeah, so I, uh, I sent a message to him and said, Hey, we're going to talk about this in our live stream. So hop in bourbon yeah. school is in the house. This is another channel that, uh, I just kind of stumbled on. Those guys do a great job. Last time I waited in line was for the last Harry Potter book. There are way too many uh, shelf available delicious bourbons that you can get. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I waited in line for hours for the first iPhone. This is back in 2007. And ever since then, like, you just order it and then wait for it to show up at your house, and it's fine. Sure. And yeah. I don't know if I've waited in line for anything else since then like that. <laughs> like, I'm okay buying stuff, but I don't want to, like, ask for permission to buy something from someone. That's why I kind of don't like lotteries for that. Yeah. If I see one on the shelf, I'll, I'll buy it. But Yeah, uh, I mean, it yeah. is different. Sugar Kitty dropped a link to uh, the bourbon drop. Please go subscribe. Um, he's got a great channel. Yeah. So he says, uh, just want to check in. have to take my son to uh, b-ball practice. It's basketball, baseball. Any other B balls? Volleyball. Volleyball. Um, so anyway, hey, uh, thanks for dropping in. And yeah, go check out and check out uh, Bourbon School as well. Somebody, if you could drop a link for Bourbon School. I don't know that channel yeah, either. You know, yeah, I, just found these guys, uh, I just found these guys this weekend. So yeah, that's Byron, awesome. Byron, is that... Is, that's not um, bar, bourbon drop. That's um, oh that oh Myron. It's oh, his it's, name is Myron. He must have just misspelled it. Uh, is at yeah. I, I was gonna say he's in like the upper mid eight hundreds. Eight hundred sixty seven sub count. Nice and close to that magic one thousand. So everybody go throw a sub oh. to uh, bourbon drop. Get him to the one thousand and let's get bourbon school on the way there as well too. So, I feel like so. we can at least get that to eight eighty yeah. tonight. Maybe eight ninety. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Yeah. So at least you, what, 870 what you, at a minimum. Come on. You could do. Yeah. Things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if either one of you guys had like a, a an allocated bottle that you were subscribe, Hold every, on. everybody has the ones that they're like super disappointed by. But if you had one that really knocked your socks off, they absolutely love and would keep it on the shelf all the time. If you could. Old rep 10. If I could, if I could get old rep 10 at retail regularly, I would <laughs> buy it regularly. I um, agree. I mean, I don't know if this is inherently allocated, but from 2022, the only one I have that like kind of blew my mind was just an old Forster single bear I randomly found for like 67 bucks. And that was incredible for that price. Was that one of the barrel proof ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of like, it says uh, mm -hmm. the master distiller selected or whatever. I don't know if okay. it's like their version I've of like the Jack Daniel single barrel that aren't picks or whatever. But nice. I love the heck out of that. And that was one of those ones. So I shop at Total Wine a lot because I live in a big city and I'm five minutes away from one. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's cold. always on Friday mornings at Total Wine, they usually that's when they get their stuff. And they always have like on the front shelf when you walk in all the allocated, schmallocated stuff. So every time I go in there, I just like check on there. And that's where I'll find like Buffalo Trace occasionally and whatnot but that was one of those like hidden gems where i'm like i didn't expect to see that but i just happened to stroll in and it killed it i had a chance to get a, an old forester single barrel store pick it's like 131 proof or whatever wow. it was 80 bucks which is what those usually run anyway mm -hmm. and it's one of those ones where i just didn't want to don't click off I'm gonna... didn't want to um spend the money at the time and i hate myself for it for not getting it that's the other thing is sometimes you get the, the FOMO. So you, you, you want to get something, but then there's the ones where you pass up on it. And then you look back and you're like, what was I thinking? You've already bought four mm -hmm. bottles this week and you're feeling a little guilty. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what were you telling me not to click? Well, I'm of? curious, is, is Ryan actually referring to what he says he's referring for? That's to? what I was just going to say. So Ryan Frank is in the house. For something. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Um, I walked into a store once when I was fairly new to bourbon. I was fairly new to Greg actually too but I had just learned Where that you were also it? into bourbon oh. and I had stopped into a store and just sitting on the shelf for a hundred bucks, they had the wild Turkey diamond anniversary mm. comes like the wooden box mm -hmm. and retail is a hundred bucks normally. And I didn't buy it for some stupid reason, but I remember that he was into bourbon and liked wild Turkey. So I told him about it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I, that's I another one it. that I just, I didn't go buy it. I just absolutely hate myself for not picking that one up. Sure. What about you guys? Any of those? <clears throat> uh, yes. I've told this story before. Um, 
So this was like three, four years ago when I was just kind of really, really getting serious about collecting. Um, you know, when you really start ramping up your spending. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, I thought, well, isn't yeah. and I Yeah. And I saw a Stag Jr. for 125 And I made the stupid mistake of thinking, oh, it'll come down. <laughs> uh, no. Nope. Yeah, uh, those don't no. come down for sure. No. Hey, can I, somebody drop a link for a bourbon school? Oh, there's already one right here. All right. There we go. Thanks, Sugar. Thank you, Sugar Kitty. <laughs> Thanks, Sugar. Sugar Kitty. What about you, Stephen? Do you have any that you've had where you uh, uh, you passed up on it and then you're like, son of a bitch? I don't. I'd have to think about that. Uh, when you said that, the only yeah, thing that came to mind, it wasn't like. Yeah, that one. Oh. I don't know if that's better or worse. Uh, well, hold on. Yeah, it's like Sorry, I can see. Okay. getting in the middle. Um, so I don't really have any like specific hitter bottle that I love that came to mind because the only one that I had my eyes on, I was like, I really need to get. <laughs> out of focus. <laughs> yeah. There we go. The, the only one I had my eyes set on when like I still hunted was just the wild turkey 17 year old bib, which I ended up buying for like 225 or something like that. Well, how was and that? that? I, I love it. I mean, I still have it. I probably should finish it before it goes stale or some shit like that because it's been like two years, but I just fine. I don't yeah, want to drink it. Yet. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, finish it and kill it completely. But what came to mind when you said that was just like all those random bottles that used to be like 65, 70, and just have now gone up to like 100 and 120 bucks in the last like two years. Like, for example, yep. Booker's. I, someone told me that Booker's wasn't a great value. So I just didn't get it. Like, 2020 like early 2020 um mm -hmm. when i first got into it i had the availability to buy so many bookers for like 65 bucks i bought a bookers for like 100 bucks in 2022 and i was like i would have happily paid 65 bucks for this and i'm sure it's same relatively totally, the same quality totally agree. Yep. yeah bookers is everywhere in minnesota up until last year i mean you were tripping mm -hmm. over it. every release you could get mm -hmm. there was multiple on the shelf at most liquor stores and it was 75 bucks yep. and now i look back and it's like man i should have loaded up on some of that i've heard they vary quite a bit in their single barrels and they do vary you know release to release mm -hmm. but um yeah i really like them so steven just recently did a bottle or did a bottle did a video on the neck pour which is no, something yeah. that you and I have been trashing the neck pour in a lot like, of our videos for the last like two months. The video you posted, I, I watched the whole video and I, I really like your guys' thoughts. Like we did that on a decanter. We had a different thing where it's like after about like a month and a half, like the whiskey went flat on us. I think we did a hunt, really? uh, old four star hundred a month and a half in a, it was a glass on glass decanter and I pushed down and I twisted it and we took samples like two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. And wow. about I, if my, my memory serves me correct, a month and a half, it just kind of fell off and went a little flat. Like it didn't completely kill it. It just lost a significant amount of flavor. Interesting. Oh, like a month and a half. We did a decanter one, but the, it was only in the decanter for like two weeks. Yeah. But so what, what we're, Steven was talking about, I sent him a link to a video that Greg and I did where, he had two bottles of Buffalo Trace that he had purchased right off the shelf next to each other, presumably the same case, same batch. One of them he drank down to like there was this much left in it maybe, and then let it sit for an entire year with just like this much left. Yep. And then we fresh cracked the other one and compared them, and it wasn't terribly noticeable. Uh -uh. We I mean, Maybe just in our heads we thought it was noticeable. Yep. So then you still have those two bottles. They haven't been touched since, and now it's been another year. So now that other one's been sitting like this for two years yep. and the other one's been sitting with only two pours out of it for another year. Yeah. So we actually need to redo that video, but we've been talking about doing a neck pour video where we want to get two single barrel store picks that are the exact same bourbon, drink one of them like halfway down and then do a comparison. So yeah. I have a theory that weeded bourbons are more sensitive to things like neck pour and age than maybe high rye bourbons. So I think that's some of it. Like I think rye is a little bit tougher of a grain and you don't notice some of the things where maybe on a weeder you would. 
So I sense mm -hmm. another bourbon note science yeah. experiment. Exactly. Here. So yeah. I mean, we, yeah. Not only have, we not only have to do neck pour videos, but then do weeder neck pours versus rye neck pours. Yeah. Challenge yeah. accepted. Anyway. The, the comments on my video are very polarizing. There's so many where it's like, this is science. It's not a <laughs> thing. It doesn't happen. You're just making it all up in your head. And there's so many words like, well, actually, I and I was like, <laughs> I'm kind of like in the middle where I think your whiskey changes over time as it oxidizes. But yeah. I don't think it's inherently like worse than an initial neck pour. I just think it slowly changes, maybe like insignificant amounts. And it, depending on what bottle, it may change more or less. And you may like it. But I think the biggest thing about the neck pour, because I don't think the neck pour is enough air to get some real significant change, unless if you leave it there for freaking years. I think it's totally mostly right. just mindset, what you've ate that day, what are you into? Because shit, like... I might not like this today, but I might come back to it on Friday and be like, that's a monster of a bottle as my yeah, first pour of the day. Who knows? It's just, yeah. it's mindset expectations of that bottle. I think it's all in here more than anything else. And is it, is it the bottle or is it the fact that today you went to Chipotle and had something really mm -hmm. spicy and your taste buds are totally different? Yeah, I made chicken curry and I'm kind of like worried that it's going to affect my blind because it still kind of tastes like whiskey and curry in my mouth right now. <laughs> what about you, Sean? What do you yeah, think of the neck spicy, pour thing? Spicy food, not the best thing uh, before uh, bourbon at all. Or any whiskey. No. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Actually, um, are there any good foods before bourbon? I think bourbon mild. Food you want before. very mild foods. Well, yeah, okay. Bloody red meat. Crinkle really? cut no, not even dill steak. chips. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, I, I we just I, what's what's that company that does the kettle cooked chips? Kettle? Well, I, is that what it's called? Yeah, there, there oh. is kettle brand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, what whatever they do like kettle cooked things, and they have crinkle cut ones that are like dill pickled flavor, and they are the greatest freaking chips ever. Greatest chips ever. If you like pickles, I feel like that would affect your palate though to some degree. <laughs> yeah, but they're so good. It, it doesn't even matter. Worth, worth well, it. It's going to affect it, I suppose, in the sense that it's going to make it taste different, but does it make it taste better? Like, I find, like, yeah, just a good medium rare, you know, good char on it steak, a piece of that, and then a good, you know, yeah. high proof. Oh, burger. yeah. Oh, that's that's oh, always everything goes good with a medium rare steak that's done well. That's, yeah. that, that's true. Yeah, for sure. But I put life, so much life goes good with, with medium rare steak. <laughs> just life in what general. What's that? Said life yeah. goes good with medium yeah. rare. whiskey and a medium so, rare steak. Sure, what, what's your you opinion on the neck pour thing? And that could um, be a feature, by the way. So I think we need to be very specific about what we're calling a neck pour. Now, so I mean, we, we've talked about this before, but so if if we're talking about that on the same day you pour just the neck out and that part is awful, and then you come back like a couple hours later, and then it's going to be magically better. No, that's not going to happen because that's not enough time for anything to happen. I mean, so all you're all you're doing is making headspace in the bottle, and the more headspace there is, the more oxygen there is, new new air interacting uh, to, with the to start in interacting with the whiskey. Also, every time it also depends on how many times you're opening the bottle in the span yeah. of time that it's sitting. So every time you open it, you're letting ethanol escape out of the bottle to some degree, and you're allowing new air to go in. And so every time you do that process, it's changing chemically a little bit each time. And so that's what's happening. So so to say that like the neck itself has like different whiskey or special or whatever, no, that's not that can't be a thing. Like that's just a stupid thing to even think. Uh, yeah. Like there's no way that this part is different than this. That part. could be a t-shirt. Yeah. So uh, R. Hayes says on the topic of whiskey possibly being impacting over time with oxygen. How do you deal with the growing? How do you deal with growing a collection with many open bottles and not drinking them fast enough? And that's kind of the problem. question a lot of people have. You can, I don't have a problem with it. I've got, you know, this bottle here is, I mean, some of these bottles I've had open for a couple of years because I save them for special occasions. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, this is a master's keep revival, but we did that test on the Buffalo trace bottle. And at least that one didn't change over a year. Certainly not enough. That makes me worried about any of my bottles. The bottle didn't go bad. Maybe it's slightly noticeable if you're like a mm -hmm. really sensitive taster, but I didn't notice the difference and he didn't notice the difference. I don't think the bottles go bad. There's no. just a, maybe a little hint that it's, you know, starting to get a little bit over oxidized. Yeah. But but we're talking over years, not 
Well, the other weeks. thing is, is then that maybe whiskey is just meant to grow and change and evolve like that. You know, it, it well, is what it is, you know. I, I mean, so like, you know, there's Dusty Dan. There's a reason that Northwest. guys hunt Dusty Bottles. Because, uh, I mean, they, they do inherently change over time. You know, and the more time that's allowed to pass, the more they change. But, I mean, yeah. so Dan can tell you, he has bottles that like are hundreds, of, or at least 100 plus year old. And, you know, they're down this much and they're still very drinkable. So they don't yeah, go yeah. bad. It's just they Bobby, they lose like their punchiness, sir. Yeah. Bobby, I sent you an email. Go back to the inbox, make sure it's sent. Yeah, it's sent. No, it looks like no, it. Your Let's see. Sorry, we're on another screen. That's uh, a different one. Yeah, it should have sent. So Bobby, I sent you an email. So this is one of my older bottles that I have open. Uh, it's what is been that? open. Uh, yeah. This is the Bardstown Pfeiffer Pavit XO. It's one of my oh, special yeah. bottles that I don't ever want to get rid of, but it's going to die eventually. Um, and so this has been open two and a half years, I guess, something like that. Um, you know, and it's fairly far down there, as you can see. Um, yep. But I, I don't I don't worry about it at all. I, I would say that once you get down to the, like that last inch to answer, was it? I forget who asked the question. Just R. Hayes. R. Yeah, R. Here. Hayes asked. Yeah. Once you're in that last inch, if you plan on letting it sit for a long time, might be good to swap it over to a sample bottle just to reduce the amount of headspace. Yep, um, absolutely. So, hey, we've got two more awesome channels that are in the chat here. Minor Stuff is in the house. You guys, you watch Minor Stuff? No. no. Dude, you is. have to go watch Minor Stuff. Yeah, so scroll And down. then uh, Northwest it's Bourbon it's is also in. So if somebody could drop links for them. Uh, Northwest Bourbon, right here. Yep, I see him. I'll okay. get him in a second. Uh, okay. And then Minor Stuff is is talking to. That's uh, Matt and Pat Minor. They do a great channel. They do um, whiskey reviews, but they also do a lot of like Blackstone cooking stuff whilst drinking whiskey. Oh, seriously, yeah, it's uh, it's a great channel. I know so, a guy named Minor, but I think his name was Mike. Mike, no, it, dude, Bobby. Oh, don't, don't say anything. I don't how long it's taken to notice he's on stage. <laughs> <laughs> he, caught, he caught me. What's up, guys? Cheers, man. Just, just leave that there for a while. What's going on, man? Yeah, no. Just drink I'm working. Yeah. I'm working. I got the, the bad X apparel on at work. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like Don't the tape. Bobby. Good stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's good. Are you, yeah, uh, minor stuff. I've been watching minor stuff for a while now. Uh, we actually talked a little bit uh, back and forth. Yeah, there's, there's, they have a, a good show, man. And Mark, of course, Northwest Bourbon, he's got great stuff too. I'm yeah, yeah, absolutely. Going to subscribe right now. These are other channels that I've not heard of. Those before. other two, yeah, though, there's though, a lot of chat Bourbon right School here. and some drop, something drop. I hadn't heard of them. I just went and subbed to them as well. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Bourbon School and and uh, Bourbon Drop. Yeah, two other two other great channels I, I stumbled upon this weekend. And it's always fun finding new channels. Just like you know, eventually we all found each other's channels, and then yeah, kind of grow the ecosystem that we've got going here of all these. All like right. I love it when I go into I'm watching one of you guys' live streams, and I'm seeing all these same folks yeah, in there totally. commenting, and then I'm in the chat with them. You yeah, know, Sugar Kitties and yeah, it's fun. Thank you so much for the support. All right, Northwest, where are you from? Washington. JT's in the house. JT. I caught at work. Let I catch some of the video. JT could, uh, he used to work at the uh, infamous Spirits Liquor. <clears throat> we were talking earlier about like liquor stores that price gouge and liquor stores that don't. Obviously, Spirits is one that, that does not. So, what does this All say? Right, guys. Uh, Bad Axe. I'm at the firehouse. Two today. So, do we have Matt or Pat in the house here? Yeah, I was just reading that on my phone. I was like, uh, at the firehouse too. I didn't know is, is he a fireman or? Wait, it's Steven. Go do your thing. Yeah. Different kind of firehouse or or what? Did did I miss something? What did I miss? Oh, I, I need to head out because I'm I'm live streaming in two minutes, so I got to score some oh, stuff okay. away before. Well, yeah, we usually go until seven anyway, so we'll probably wrap yeah. this up pretty quick, and then so yeah, everybody in here. We'll wrap it up, and then why don't you guys head over and check out Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans? Watch Steven do his yeah. Matt Madness journey. He's going yeah. up to the big time here. So I yeah, mean, right. you guys are. It's just going to be me tonight, so you guys are also more than welcome to just head over. You know, to me. You know my email. Cool. Ask for the link, and I'll add you all on. But yeah, I do have to head out. It's been fun. It's been real. Cheers, guys. We'll sub to that guy. See you later. Yeah, you man, have a good one. Cheers. See you, Steven.
All right. Yeah, we probably should end this now because that, that way we're not uh, stepping on Steven's live stream. We usually allot the uh, we'll six, give him a few minutes to get six, settled in six to seven yeah. slot, which I like how that works too. I, but, you know, like I, I notice like everybody kind of has their own schedule. You know, Sean, you're always Friday nights. Bobby, you usually have Except a schedule. For me. I'm yeah. jacked, dude. <laughs> my schedule, He's all over the my, place. This schedule like four ruins hours. my live schedule, dude. <laughs> dude, Bob, we got we got to get you off Tuesday nights. It's causing problems. <laughs> dude, man. Oh if my I, god, I, dude! I could not. I literally, I even looked over at my wife. I was like, "There's a dude in the chat right now that's got an earpiece in in church." Did I tell you about that? <laughs> no. We were on Bobby's live stream. I, 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 I had to turn down my speaker. We're not. We don't need to talk dude, about that again. I did. Dude, I did <laughs> want. I was like, "Oh crap! I don't want any part of this." I was about to end the live just so I, I wasn't any part of it, dude. <laughs> hey, but, but I, won, I won the same one. <laughs> you did win, dude. Yeah. Was, oh my was, gosh, like, dude. He was that watching was Bobby's live funny. stream from church and like commenting, and then he won a bottle. And I, I put him in the stream, like, dude, are you really in church? He's like, yes. And my wife is not impressed or whatever. And he's like, <laughs> she's even more mad now that I want a bottle. So he's in church with an earpiece in. Oh, uh, my wife looked at me. She goes, That's awesome. My wife looked at me. Don't night. you ever, don't you even think about trying that crap? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Sean wins oh, with whiskey too. Yeah, no, don't don't follow my bad example. That's oh no, dude! That's Heck no, man! Oh, that that was funny, dude! Oh my gosh! So, all right, so we got a we got a link here for uh, Tipsy, and then we've got another one coming up here. We've got a link for Northwest Bourbon. Have we had a link for oh and minor stuff? So I'll make sure to get all. They're in the chat right now, but I'll get them all up on the screen here. So there's one. Yeah, through you guys uh, uh, up there, like, minor stuff. Do a Rubik's Cube Check channel. Because I would actually watch that. They just, I don't um, they went over two or three thousand just recently, I think. Uh, oh, minor? Yeah, of minor stuff. No, he's 1.98. I just subscribed well, okay, like well, five okay. minutes ago. Okay. Well, maybe he's about one, to hit one two. And a half, I think. They, they had a good way, I think, at one and a half, I think. So, because they're creeping up on two then. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're not uh, if you're not subscribed, go over there and subscribe. Get those fellas to that two thousand mark. Yeah. Yeah. What kind so, of giveaway are you guys gonna have? Once you would get in on this. <laughs> I want them to give away some food. I watched some of those Blackstone, <laughs> yeah, griddle. Because I, I just got a Blackstone or a, a Blackstone ripoff this last summer. My oh, wife sorry. and I love cooking on it. Now it's so cold out. I just I'm not doing. I know those guys go out in the cold. It looks like it's cold where they're at. You see their breasts sometimes. Really? I think they're over in the Northeast somewhere, if I remember correctly. Hmm. But yeah, so this summer I'll be firing that up. But when we first got that, um. We were watching all kinds of all That's kinds awesome. of videos about cooking on the Blackstone, so we'll uh, be watching minor stuff. That. Uh, dude, Bourbon School says we're almost at two dot 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 hundred. Okay, so they're in newer <laughs> channels. So go show some support for uh, for Bourbon School. Uh, it's cold up here, right. New Hampshire. Yeah, hey, New Hampshire. Got, okay, cool. I just subbed you ten minutes ago. To who? Uh, Bourbon School. Bourbon School. Sweet. Yeah, me too. I've never seen a video, but I'll go home yeah, and watch. Me either. Yeah. I love it. All right, well, let's wrap this up so uh, so folks can go over and uh, and watch Stephen's training regimen. Hey, if, if you don't mind, guys, before we wrap, uh, a little bit of just uh, self promotion here. I am nine away sure. from fifteen hundred, so just just saying. Dude! Nine hey. subs away from fifteen hundred. All you right. Know what? Here's what I'll do for you. I will unsubscribe. That's what I was going to say. Nine times. <laughs> I'm By gonna make the way, more oh, yeah, right. I'm, that's great, I'm Greg. Everyone in here, but so Sean is. If you're in here and you don't know, Sean is Whiskey Wars. So if you and can, he's also mash oh, and mash and metal. metal, yeah, yeah. And then Bobby is Bad Axe Bourbon. If we do have some, and new he's also. You don't want to. <laughs> I was just gonna mess with it. Does he have? <laughs> so that's that's gonna make that's all oh, I was like, does Bobby have another channel I don't know about? Uh, it was like, I, did that for, I don't know. And I'm not going to go there. <laughs> He's got a mustache related channel that gets a real inappropriate real fast. Yeah, yeah, it, right. That's the only thing, guys. That's the only thing. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Ryan Frank says, hey, it's being it's too lazy, what's the food and bourbon channel again? It's Minor it's stuff. M I. That's all you see. <laughs> that's the only thing. Somebody fans, screenshot though. that. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> so yeah um if you're if you haven't already subscribed whiskey wars sean up there in the top corner bad axe bourbon down here in the bottom 
So go check that out. Uh, Bobby, I did put the playlist on. I think I streamed a solid nine hours of li- live streaming oh, overnight last night. So you guys Very awesome, nice. Man. I appreciate so, it. Yeah, I'll do it again. But everybody, <laughs> cheers. Hey, thank you guys for joining in on our live stream. Thanks all of you guys that uh, commented. And, yeah, go over and check out um, Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. We'll probably see you over there in the chat. Cheers. Right on. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Thanks guys. for having me. See you next time. See you.